He uh, moves on to uh, to say that moral relativism self-destructs, right? And so that's, again, you can apply this kind of uh, practical self-destruction to, to moral relativism. He says, moral relativists, those who deny universal objective morality, are especially vulnerable to practical suicide, right? Um, so, you know, the, the idea here is that... Um, uh, so there's a couple kinds kinds of relativism, uh, you know, more relativism. There's more relativism that we might say subjective, you know, uh, what's right for me may not be right for you. What's right for you may not be right for 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 me. That right. kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. There is um, uh, uh, cultural relativism or social relativism, more relativism that says, you know, the culture decides what is morally right. Mm-hmm. So he focuses here on this individual or subjective or personal moral relativism, right? What's right for me may not be right for you kind of thing, right? And so in saying that, the relativist is saying there's no universal standard for right and wrong. The individual determines it, right? right? I determine what's right, morally right for me. Now, even in saying that, it's kind of scary. Right. <laughs> but that's the position of the of the um, individual, personal, subjective, moral mm-hmm. relativist. Because even too, when someone says that and then they go against their own convictions at some point, like we all do, uh, you know, I, I think it's it's morally uh, correct for me to, to always tell the truth for me personally. Mm-hmm. And then I go tell a lie. Well, mm-hmm. Where, where's my condemnation then? Right. You know, right. do I throw myself in jail at that point, or you know, what 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 should be the the, the response to that? Yeah. So th- yeah. there's there's a lot of issues just holding that position. Right, right. and it's even more insidious than that because the idea here is you can never condemn anybody for anything because. It's if it's right for them, then it must then it's morally right. Right, the yeah. relativist has to say right. So it's o- always correct for me to tell the truth, except when I don't. So <laughs> right, th- that's my, my yeah. right rule. Or you know, someone can act any kind of way they want, no matter how heinous the act, because as long as they believe it's morally right for them. Right. So some people, you know, love people. Some people eat people, whatever, you know, <laughs> love it, to eat people, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, that's, uh, you know, so that's the that's the more relativist. It's a really, you know, and, and most people, if you if you meet them on the street, you know, and ask them, so do you think, you know, what's right for you may be right for me? And, you know, many people will say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's the way it works. Right. Yeah. Without even thinking through what's mm-hmm. what what the implications of uh, of the pos- of the position is. Right. In other words, um, uh, this kind of moral relativism, this individual subjective moral relativism really eliminates uh, morality. I mean, if you think about it. Right. right. In other words, if I have a uh, if I have a black pen. Right. We, we see this black. But I say. Uh, this is a green pen because whatever color is right for me is right for me and whatever color is right for you is right right for you. And you say, it's a blue pen. Mm -hmm. And somebody else says, it's a red pen. And somebody else says, it's a white pen, right? And uh, notice what happens when I say, uh, would you and you go next door and get me the blue pen? What's going to happen? Right. Well, it's, uh, they're not going to be able to know what pen to get, right? In other words, the idea of color becomes meaningless if anybody can think of anything, uh, you know, in terms of their particular view of color. Right. And so morality works the same way. It becomes meaningless if each individual determines what morality is, right? People are in their own moral universe, right? Yeah. And this is especially true once we get into the scientific method and our kind of understanding on, on how to do science with kind of the peer review stuff. You know, uh, I, I need this grant money, so I need it more than actually telling the truth. Here's the desired outcome that I need for this. Smoking is OK uh, because Philip Morris is funding me. And so I need the grant money more than I, I, <laughs> I need the accolades of of, of uh, if, if, if I'm caught to, to, to go against uh, what I've found in my study. Right, so I right. shouldn't tell the truth because, uh, you know, here's, here, here's a point in time where, where you know, the, uh, I can be uh, claimed to be, uh, hold science in high regard, but clearly I'm, I'm doing the opposite of what I'm saying. Yeah, and yeah. That's fine. That should be fine. Or, uh, you know, here, can you check my work? Uh, there's a star over here that I, that I want you to look at. Uh, is it, is, is it a red quasar? 
Uh, no, I don't see red. I don't see a star. Uh, th those those are those are hole punches in the sky. Uh, <laughs> that, that's what I believe, and that's fine for me. Or uh, you know, I, I don't like you, and so I'm going to lie about everything. Th this is the worst paper ever that I've received from anybody. I'm going to post it online and talk about how bad it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, once once you've eliminated that initial uh, argument, then everything else that follows eats itself up. Right, so, right. So, so self destructs. Right. So if you try to, you know, apply the same kind of reasoning to reality, right? What's real for me may <laughs> right. not be real for you kind of thing. Uh, you know, you can get into trouble pretty quick, yeah. right? Well, gravity isn't really real to me. Right. right. I mean, it might yeah. be real to you, but it's not real to me. Yeah. So, you know, relativity, uh, relativity with regard to reality breaks breaks down pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And he's making the same point here with regard to morality. Right. Right. The same point uh, uh, stands. Relativity with regard to morality has some real serious problems and it breaks down uh, pretty quickly. Quickly, And so he says, uh, you know, more relativists than are those who deny universal objective morality. They deny that there is an objective standard that's independent of what the individual believes or thinks or the individual's uh, opinion. Because if morality is just what I believe, then really it's just my opinion. And, okay, everybody has opinions, right? right? Sure. If there's no objective standard, right, that's independent of anybody, then we're just talking about people's feelings, their opinions, and that sort of thing. And now, you know. Might makes right. Whoever <laughs> holds the most power, who has <laughs> yeah. the most guns, yeah. they're the ones that drive, you know, morality. But even to say that, you know, oh, you can't, you can't do that is, is a, an objective standard that you're trying to impose on somebody. Right. Oh, you can't do that to me. Well, yes, I can because I say I can. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, and so and so that's his that's his illustration here. He says, uh, you know, we're, the, this kind of position is especially vulnerable to this practical self destruction. When a relativist says you shouldn't force your morality on other people, he says, I always ask, why not? <laughs> right. Yeah. If they're a moral relativist, then you know. Why shouldn't I force try to force if I believe that's what's right for me, right? Then why are you condemning me for it? Right? right. So why not? Why why not? Notice um what uh what can he asked us, what can he say now? Right? What can the moral relativist say now? He certainly can't respond as wrong. <laughs> right? Well, maybe for you, right? Right? Yeah. right? So, you know, and if he does, then you say, well, you know, if you think it's wrong, then why are you doing it yourself? Right? It's wrong. Well, if it's wrong, why are you doing it? Right. 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 Uh, so why are you pushing your morality on me right now by saying that something is, is wrong, mm -hmm. right? So you're doing the same thing that you're condemning, and this is this idea of practical uh, self-destruction with regard to these types of positions. Yeah. Right? We, and we did cover this, too, in um, How to Be an Atheist by Mitch Stokes and also Nancy Piercy. We talked about how uh, you know every generation believes that it's the most moral that it can be. We, we found the answer. Slavery is wrong, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 testing against people who are unaware of it is is morally wrong. Well, okay. Well, what happens if a hundred years from now we find out that uh, the only way to save the human race from destruction is to test on people illegally and hold them against their will? Is that is that right? Is that yeah, wrong? Yeah. Well, okay. Then we're going to carve out a situation for that particularly. If if this is the case, then this is the case. Well, okay. I thought I thought we had figured this all out. Right, if, right. if if the 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 morality of the society changes and you know what happens you know uh, further down the line and can we uh, can we ever say that this is moral if we have a subjective standards within humanity itself uh that that causes us to then in 100 years 150 years or you know in in the scope of a supreme court decision change the meaning of words and definitions and the understandings of, of right and wrong or what was illegal is now uh, illegal or what was illegal is now legal. You know, what do we do with that type of information? You have, it, it's, it's almost like society 
is then pushing for moral relativism, but at the same time, you can't be a moral relativist and still push for for a moral position, right? Yeah, right? <laughs> otherwise, because you're, it's self defeating. The, the Bonson Stein debate. Uh, Greg Bonson asked the, the the of course the the biggest question that um, philosophers ask each other: What about the Nazis? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, almost any time that you start talking about <laughs> ethics and morality, yeah. uh, Nazi Germany yeah. kind of in, intrudes itself into into the discussion. The communists you know? killed a lot more people, so we should say, well, what about Stalin? Yeah. <laughs> so what, he says, what about Stalin? And uh, Stein, so Stein comes back with kind of this, this social understanding that, well, you know, in, in the greater European culture, this was <laughs> this was wrong. Well, OK, why not apply that to the entire universe then? Yeah. Well, yeah. you can't because the, the, the moral claims reside in people in Stein's in, in kind of the atheist point of view in, inside the, the moral relativist. And so having an objective outside of humanity um, uh, uh, would have a greater pull. In fact, having the person who created everything would be able to dictate the rules as yeah. both owner and uh, hopefully being all good. And so derives from his character um, uh, certain claims that uh, he pulls from uh, his own character. And so uh, surprisingly enough, the Christians have an answer for that. Whether you agree with it or not, that that's uh, entirely inconsequential. It's not, oh, there's a subjective nature to God. It's he's objective as being outside of, of humanity. So right. by definition, he's objective. Yeah, yeah, exactly.